My name is Mark Abramson, and I am the author of the Beach Reading Mystery Series, of which there are seven books so far, all set in San Francisco Castro. But today I'm going to read from my new memoir uh, for my brothers, which um, is non my first nonfiction book, and it covers the worst of the AIDS crisis in San Francisco in the 80s. I'm going to just read a part of a chapter. In 1987, the word got around that Rita Rocket was pregnant, so Patrick Toner decided to give her a baby shower at his place on Buena Vista Terrace. Patrick's roommate in that apartment was Sharon McKnight. She must have arrived late to the shower, but one of Rita's sisters and Ruth Brinker, the project of open, uh, founder of Project Open Hand, were already there. What I remember most is the men who attended that evening, and I can still picture it as a special time and place for all of us to be together. When the time came for Rita to open her gifts, most of the party guests migrated toward the front of the house. Rita was seated in the bay window surrounded by piles of gift wrap boxes. Someone had set out several rows of folding chairs facing her, and I ended up sitting beside the singer Sylvester. We were in the back row on the right, and he was in a talkative mood, too. Between the two of us, we did a running commentary on Rita and her gifts. I don't know what was so funny, but I remember thinking how I had never had so much fun with Sylvester before. I'd known him for years, but most of the times we had spent together, he was about to perform at some event that I was working at. The night of the shower, Rita was on center stage, so Sylvester and I didn't have to do anything. At one point, I went into the kitchen to get us both another drink. Maybe I stood up too fast, but I felt dizzy for whatever reason. I stood there in the kitchen and looked around at who was there. Terry Thompson and Blair, Ed Stark and his lover Richard, also known as Roz. Patrick Toner was mixing himself a drink at the self-service bar. Pete Patine was waiting his turn ahead of me. David Sarathan was in front of the refrigerator popping the top off a bottle of beer. David and Pete would soon become lovers, or maybe they already were that night. I have a mental image of that scene as clear as a photograph. Two men had their backs to me, so I can only recall the sleeve of a plaid shirt, maybe Drew Oaken, the porn star Al Parker, and the back of a dark head with thinning hair, probably Jim Skatanich. My mind took a simple snapshot, and I said to myself, we are all dying. That mental image remains with me to this day, the refrigerator, the sink, the bag of melting ice, table and chairs, but mostly I see those men who are all gone. The only difference between then and now is that the picture is aged with the years from color into black and white. I had a heightened awareness in those days that any time I spent with a friend might be the last time I would see him. For one single moment that night, I realized that most of my closest friends in San Francisco were together in the same time and place. I got our drinks and went back to the front of the house. I was in a festive mood and cracking jokes, maybe to overcompensate for my sense of doom. I sat back down with Sylvester and we laughed some more while Rita opened gifts for the brand new life growing inside her. A few weeks later, April 26, 1987, Sunday, Rita had her baby. Patrick Toner called the Eagle to let everyone know. Terry Thompson, the manager, got on the microphone to announce to the beer bus crowd that Rita Rocket had a baby boy and shots were on the house. The place went up in cheers and everyone raised their glasses to drink to a new life and for a woman we all loved. Richard and Jerry, Otis, Pete and David, Jim and Drew, Ed and Roz, Terry and Blair, Patrick Toner, even Sylvester, all died during the next few years the darkest days of the AIDS epidemic. Rita's baby boy is six foot three now.